can we uh, do anything by using SIMD? Oops, obviously we can. Um, SSC2, we can do two sums per, per operation, AVX24 and AVX512, we can do eight sums in one go. Nice. But does this actually save power? Well, let's do an experiment. Oops. We're going to run a max element calculation over level one, level two cache, about two, 200 to 20,000 elements. Have equivalent implementations in uh, SSC2, AVX2, and AVX512. We're going to measure how long it takes. Use open hardware monitor to tap the power use, temperature, clock frequency, and see does it really save power? Crikey. <laughs> this is challenging. We're going to generate <laughs> the equivalent. <laughs> I knew something was going to go wrong. We're going to generate uh, the, the equivalent implementations by using the DR cubed uh, framework. We're going to instantiate generic lambdas with SIMD wrappers, and we get very fast code. This stuff is very dense. It's doing a 32 comparison uh, max element reduction. Bloody hell. Uh, and this is what we're trying to avoid by, by using the SIMD wrappers. We don't want to work with them to So. Is it quick? Yes. Um, this is uh, running on a Silver 414 at 2.8 gigahertz max uh, clock speed, I, 3 billion operations a second, but we're actually processing 14 billion doubles per second, which is pretty good. Um, the experiment, we're going to run STL max element, we're going to run SSE2, AVX2, and AVX512. We're going to look at the energy used as the area under the power curve and see. See what happens. Oh, by the way, STL, we're going to do a third of the work because it takes up too much of the graph. Uh, compiling using Clang. Get off, you're spoiling my punch line. Um, <laughs> right, STL max, using the third of the workload, it goes from about uh, 14 watts to 24 watts usage. The clock ramps up to 2.8 gigahertz, and it takes about 48, 46 seconds for each of these things to run. Running the same thing with SSC2, but, God grief, running the same thing with SSC2, it, <laughs> running the same thing with SSC2, it takes 27 seconds, so it's going twice as fast. The area under the curve is the actual energy used, but it's doing three times the work, so it's about six times more efficient. What happens when we use AVX2? When we use AVX2, we go tw twice as fast again, and we use, it takes 14 seconds. So, and the area under the curve is again halved again. And what happens when we use AVX512? <sighs> it goes twice as fast again. Um, so, the area under the curve of these things is uh, basically how much energy we've used. So, we use about an order of magnitude less energy when we get these um, vectorized instructions used. So. We can save the planet by using SIMD. Running this with Intel, uh, we get some interesting results. <laughs> Very interesting results. Ah, crikey. Um, it down clocks, and so it doesn't go twice as fast with the AVX512, it just goes marginally faster. But the clock only goes up to about one and a half gigahertz rather than 2.8 gigahertz. But if we look at the actual power used, is about 80% of the peak power used on the other instruction sets, but we still saved energy. There's no such thing as a free lunch, but in this case, we're going out, we're buying eight burgers and only eating one of them. Uh, all, this, <laughs> all this stuff is available uh, on the GitHub repo. Uh, the project's called Dancing AVX512. You can play with it yourself. It compiles under pretty much everything. Thank you. Thank you.